Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing fantastic and that you're all having a wonderful day. Likes, comments, and subscriptions. They do help out the channel an awful lot. Uh, welcome back to another news I missed. Where I go over the news that I missed. Hope that you've all been doing well. Once again, I'm still away, taking a little vacay during the holiday. STC Bahrain, a subsidiary of the Bahrain Telecom Operator STC Group, recently said its partnership agreement with payment service provider Easy Financial Services has created an opening that allows clients to pay their bills using crypto. According to a statement, the telecom operator's move demonstrates its strong focus on advancing Bahrain's finance or fintech sector as world-class digital enablers. Uh, roughly around 2019, maybe towards the middle or even the end of it, uh, there appeared randomly a very large amount of companies who began to announce that they were uh, accepting cryptocurrencies. The really weird part is that a lot of them uh, were announcing that they were accepting cryptocurrencies in the form of payment for bills, not like you could buy a an item from them. It was more of a, if you are using our service, you can then now pay us in cryptocurrencies as well. Uh, I am still highly skeptical that there are going to be a, a gigantic amount of people who are willing currently to actually give up their cryptocurrencies, especially when it comes to paying a bill. But if you look at the, I guess, the wider view of all of this, it is quite interesting uh, how far adoption has come. A lot of times people, a vast majority of people, especially within the cryptocurrency space, tend to look at things like this. Listen, it is not the most exciting news in the world. But if you look at the news, I make news every day. Hello. Uh, we always hear about a different company who's getting into, is buying, is investing in, is mining, something, something with cryptocurrencies. At this point, over the last years that I've had this channel, uh, there have been at least 400 companies. Because if you think about it, 363, I've made it at least over, it must be over 2,000 videos at this point. Or 1,500, somewhere around there. All the time, it's very, so the point to be made is that in the future, we will basically be able to pay for everything in crypto. I made a video about a year and a half ago, two years, I don't know the exact time again, uh, where I basically said there was, I, someone made me annoyed online. It wasn't from this channel, it wasn't from the comment section, but there was someone who was like, you can't buy anything with crypto. It's nonsense, people are only using it for illicit this or terrible this or bad this. So I went online and I found that you basically literally could buy everything already with crypto. Sometimes you had to do like a bit of a workaround. There was like a, a third or fourth party company uh, who was basically working with another airline and you had to pay them and they ended up paying the airline. But the fourth company actually did accept cryptocurrencies. It was usually Dogecoin, XRP, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Litecoin at the time. But now we've gotten to the point where like the actual major companies themselves are now trying to accumulate cryptocurrencies because in my mind, they understand and know exactly how valuable these things are or how much more valuable that they're going to be. So years ago, the idea was that they would accept it and then they would kind of like uh, swap it back into fiat or they would actually not accept it at all and it had to be through another, uh, once again, a air quote, fourth party provider. So it's just fascinating to see these companies who are like openly being like, no, 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 we accept it. We accept it. Like, like we, we would love to take your cryptocurrencies from you. The Bahrain Telecom operator, STC Bahrain, recently revealed in a statement that it is now accepting crypto, ostensibly making it the first in the kingdom to do so, uh, not within the entirety of the UAE, as if you've been paying attention, uh, Dubai and... Is it Saudi Arabia? There's another one. Uh, they have really, I mean, they dove off the deep end when it comes to accepting cryptocurrencies. It's basically, you know, uh, all but accepted there. Not as, uh, you know, payment, you know, as a legal tender, but you understand what I'm saying. The statement also said the company teamed up with payment service provider Easy Financial Services, 
The partnership allows the STC Bahrain customers to settle their bills using the Binance wallet. Commenting on the partnership with Easy, and once again, pay attention to the Binance thing. Binance, we mentioned this years ago. One of the major things or problems, air quote, that regulators had with the cryptocurrency space is that it wasn't regulated. Last year, Binance lost its mind. And I think they're legal in just about every single one of every single country on the planet. But nine out of ten times, nine out of ten, when you hear that a company is accepting crypto or working with a cryptocurrency company or trying to integrate crypto, it's usually always with Binance. I wonder how rich these people actually are and how far their influence also actually goes. Because it's, it's a bit intense that everything is constantly uh, flowing through Binance. Commenting on the partnership, Nizar Banabella, the CEO of STC Bahrain, said, Rapid digitization across the, gro the, grobe, the globe is transforming all aspects of our life. And payments are at the most crucial element. From online shopping and streaming videos to money transfers, almost every digital activity relies on a payment system. This was relatively popular. A lot of times whenever we get news uh, from the UAE, uh, it usually revolves around them accepting cryptocurrencies in some sort of way. But I mean, it is understandable. The people, the vast majority of people who live within the UAE are uh, quite wealthy. So I assume that they just know how to make money. And if they see that crypto has a future, they're jumping on it now before prices go up so that they can become even richer. That's how making money works. That's the STC Bahrain Telecom provider is now accepting crypto as a method of payment. And yeah, let's move on. Also in, okay, I'm a little skeptical. The Bank for International Settlements or the BIS apparently is now allowing banks to hold 2% of their revenues in cryptocurrency as per its recently released Prudential Treatment of Crypto Asset Exposure Report for December 2022. In June, the Bank for International Settlements allowed only a few banks to hold not more than 1% of their reserves in crypto. The last couple of years... And this is why when, when you talk about or when people ask me uh, how I know crypto uh, has longevity or will be around or why I believe in it so much, it's not so much that I believe in it so much per se, which I do as far as like I think it has a, a bright future. But for me, once again, when you go over daily news daily and you constantly see that every major bank in the world is holding crypto or trying to hold crypto. When you look at news reports of members of parliament around the world who are holding crypto or have uh, cryptocurrency mining businesses. When you have the news that we had a couple of days ago, the amount of senators and congressional people within the United States who are either trying to stop cryptocurrency tax laws, lower cryptocurrency taxes... Uh, trying to allow Bitcoin and cryptocurrency mining within their state, in their province, or whatever, it kind of all adds up very quickly that if that's the surface level of what we're seeing, and that's already a huge surface level, when you know that every... Remember a couple of years ago when we had, I think from the get-go, there were 300 banks in America uh, who were applying to hold cryptocurrencies, and it's like, okay, I get it. It's no longer just us in this playing field. It's It's now a... Huge amount of very wealthy players who are trying to gobble up as many coins as they can. This also, you know, tinfoil hats me when I talk about actual manipulation in the market and then prices and stuff moving down. So, you know. The policy, which will be effective from the 1st of January 2025, geez Louise, also defines crypto assets and the manner in which they can be processed. The report has categorized cryptocurrencies under groups called Group 1 and Group 2. Okay, the Group 1 asset uh, includes tokenized traditional assets and digital assets which have effective stabilization mechanisms 
All right. Meanwhile, group two has digital assets that do not conform to any of the classification terms and conditions. So does that make group one stable coins? Okay. And I guess group two would be Bitcoin. I, I don't know. Not, does not conform to any classification terms. All right. Thus, the report suggests that the bank's financial exposure to group two crypto assets must not be more than 2% of the bank's tier one capital within their reserves. For, for, for clarification, uh, some of these banks are worth like $75 billion. Even the idea of them allocating half of a percent of that money into buying Bitcoin, into buying Ether, into buying, even if it was just across five different coins, that's, in, that's, in, that's insane because that's still one bank out of the like 800 banks that we have floating around on the planet. The new policy thus allows banks and financial organizations to experiment into different cryptocurrencies to increase their reserves. I wonder why the date of the 1st of January 2025 is there and it's not the 1st of January 2023 or 2024. I That's a very specific time to actually have like a situation like that where banks would actually be able to allocate a huge, a huge, poor, they, they think of 1%. It's really insane when you think about like, even if you think about like 1% of your wealth or how much like you actually have or own, it's a significant amount. And then the more you scale that up, if you have a hundred million dollars, a 1% allocation is $1 million. 2% is 2 million. That's a huge amount of money to be able to be like, eh, all right, I'll throw that into crypto. That does a huge amount for a portfolio. Now imagine that replicated 700, 800 other times. It's quite fascinating indeed. So uh, this is a long way off, at least for the uh, BIS regulated banks. Uh, they're apparently allowed to hold now not more than 1%, but eventually it's going to be 2%. So that'll be, uh, we're, we're nearing the time. Once again, when I first got into crypto, we are nearing that time where all the initial uh, analyzers and analysts uh, told the cryptocurrency space that cryptocurrencies would receive near full adoption by the year 2025, 2026. So that's also right there as well. The, the first steps were, uh, what was it? Something about trying to or like lying about banning it and then like actually accepting it. The other part was, uh, fiat currencies, hyperinflating. Apparently, the next step is uh, inflation not stopping, but cryptocurrencies uh, moving up and other people taking notice and then cryptocurrencies kind of uh, taking over the world, if you will. We'll see. Not too long away. That's the Bank for International Settlements is now allowing banks to hold 2% of their reserves in crypto, according to the Prudential Treatment of Crypto Asset Exposure Report. And yeah. Let's move on. Also in, sure, why not? Following the collapse of FTX, Vitalik Buterin is planning a new set of protocols that would help exchanges show their customers what reserves they have in place. One of the big things that allegedly led to the fall of FTX was the sudden and unexpected liquidity crunch the company seemed to endure last minute. It was stated in a series of messages online that Sam Bankman-Fried, the man behind FTX, had reached out to a bigger counterpart, Binance, to claim that the company was expecting a sudden, experiencing a sudden lack of funds, and that Binance stood to benefit by buying the smaller company out. For a while, it looked like this was going to happen, though Binance later sent out an announcement saying that this would not be moving forward, with the acquisition giving FTX was dealing with far too many issues. And there was nothing its staff could do as such FTX later fell into disarray. So once again, for those of you who missed that, because I'm sure one person definitely did not hear that. The entire idea of FTX collapsed, and I'm, and I'm going to keep reiterating it until you all really understand that every crypto exchange is exa exactly the same. Uh, FTX was not the first cryptocurrency exchange to do what it did. They're all doing the exact same thing, all of them. They're all over leveraging. They've all created coins that are being used to buy other assets. I, I still think one of the main reasons why FTX actually ended up collapsing was because everyone panicked. 
They took all their money off of the exchange and all the, the exchange usually made money by other people's money. That's how exchanges work. They take a fee. And that's why the entire thing actually ended up collapsing. You know, they're all doing the exact same thing. To ensure that this never happens again, Buterin thinks it's important for all crypto exchanges to be able to show from the get-go that they have money in place to support themselves, even in the direst of circumstances. He says that this will help build customer trust and allow them to see what they're dealing with in terms of finding companies to trade through. But this should have happened beforehand. I this, this should not be a conversation now that everything has collapsed. From the very beginning, we should have heard from every cryptocurrency exchange how much money they had on their platform. The point of cryptocurrencies, at least from a blockchain perspective, is to have an un near unlimited amount of transparency, i.e., I put my crypto on your exchange. Please show me the wallet address where my cryptocurrency is. If you have 3 million customers, you should have at all times. There should be a website where you can go to and you see a real-time tracker for how many coins and how much money is actually in that exchange. I still find it very weird that this is now a discussion since FTX crashed. And we've had at least 12 other crypto exchanges over the course of the last six years who have also collapsed as well. Right now, Buterin wants to use Binance as a sort of guinea pig in which the exchange is used to test out the new series of protocols. Chang Peng Cao said in an interview, and I think, hold on. And I think there are no suspicious activities related to us. For other players, I have not seen their books, so I cannot com comment, but it is not a very good thing to do. They may or may not have a valid reason to do so, but I really don't know. We expect it, the Merkle tree, in a couple of weeks, and therefore we have published all of our cold wa oh, oh, there we go, cold wallet addresses. It is not as good as a Merkle tree, but at least users know how many funds we have. So, hopefully, uh, this all uh, gets up nice and, and running. Uh, Binance, I think, is still the only, if not one of the only, cryptocurrency exchanges who has released... Uh, the entirety of their proof of reserves. And this is after the entire uh, auditing fiasco with, I think it was Mazars, M-A-Z-A-R-S, the company who ended up uh, auditing them and then ended up uh, walking out the door. So cool. Uh, thank you, Vitalik Buterin, for trying to get crypto exchanges to do what they should have been doing since around 2012. But, you know, we'll get there eventually. That's the Vitalik Buterin FTX uh, auditing news. Yeah. Let's move on. Also in the news, FC Barcelona, one of the most successful football teams in Europe, has signed a partnership agreement with the cryptocurrency exchange Whitebit. I have never heard of that in my entire life. Through June 2025, there's that year again, the exchange will be the team's official cryptocurrency exchange partner. This, wait, hold on. Sorry, there we go. The football juggernaut said that its relationship with Whitebit will help them to continue to be a benchmark both on and off the pitch in an official release posted to their website. Whitebit and FC Barcelona are planning a number of events both online and in person to bring together crypto enthusiasts and football fans Barcelona's handball? Oh, okay, <laughs> I was like, what's handball? Then I write sport. Barcelona's handball, basketball, roller hockey, and futsal? Okay, teams will also be participating in the exchange. The Spanish club said that the, one of the major goals of the effort is to educate the sports community about the benefits of cryptocurrencies and that white bit emblem would be shown on the iconic... Camp Nou Stadium scoreboard on game days. Fantastic. I've never heard of Whitebit, but congratulations on getting a partnership that is uh, so massive. They were, I mean, last year was like the year of sports crypto exchange uh, partnerships where like even what's that stadium that changed its name into like a cryptocurrency website? It was kind of weird. 
I think it was more of like a uh, like a bull market kind of hype thing where everyone was just kind of doing anything that had to do with sports and cryptocurrencies and stuff like that. So partnerships like this usually end up being the 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 football team is trying to have merch, but they want the merch to also be sold for crypto. So the cryptocurrency exchange ends up supporting them in this way by allowing people to be able to pay in crypto. But then also a lot of times it has to do with like metaverse stuff, which a lot of people are trying to make next year where basically you'll be able to like watch a game through the metaverse and a whole bunch of others. Sure, why not? That's the, F that's the FC Barcelona has signed a partnership with Whitebit. Has anyone heard of Whitebit? I would, I would love LUV uh, to see exactly what their trading volume looks like because I, I just have a feeling it's probably... Maybe it's like a couple million per day, but I've never... All right. That's the FC Barcelona Whitebit news. Wow. That's, that's crazy. All right. Let's move on. Also in the news, there's that name again. Cryptocurrency exchange Binance has offered to support Azerbaijan in efforts to establish regulations for digital assets. The leading coin trading platform has been active in the region this year, seeking to expand market presence and increase interactions with authorities. For those of you who haven't seen those really weird photos of, of Changpeng Cao holding hands with like world leaders, uh, as they discuss cryptocurrency regulations, not holding hands like shaking <laughs> I made it sound a lot creeper than it actually is. Shaking hands with all these people. But there have been so many, like I, once again, I wonder exactly uh, how far their influence goes. Because this is not the first, this is not the first country that they're actually helping uh, with cryptocurrency regulation. It's also kind of weird to think that they're kind of like the chosen name that governments are going to to help them how to figure out how to actually adopt, use, regulate, and tax uh, cryptocurrencies. The world's largest exchange, Binance, is ready to provide support to the Central Bank of Azerbaijan, the CBA. In elaborating mechanisms for crypto regulation, the company's director of governmental relations in the Commonwealth of Ind... Jeez Louise. Whew. The company's director of government relations in the Commonwealth of Independent States, CIS, Olga Goncharova, told local media. Speaking to Azerbaijan's trend news agency, the Binance representative revealed that regulatory matters have been discussed during a recent meeting with CBA officials and stated, in practice, both around the world and in the number of CIS countries, Central banks choose the way to regulate cryptocurrency rather than ban it. Introducing regulation will increase confidence in the industry, as well as foreign direct investment in the country. The executive emphasized that Binance sees great potential for the crypto industry in the future, noting that traders in CIS countries show interest in its products. Not really much more to dig into there other than the fact that uh, it's little... Weird, like Binance is essentially, I don't even think, how do I say this? I don't even think that they're actually um, helping them more so like telling, maybe telling them like not exactly what to do, but like, of course, it has to be favorable for Binance. Binance is not going to be helping out multiple countries if they somehow release like unfavorable laws for Binance. So I wonder like if there's money being passed around the scenes you know, that we can't simply see. Like, remember years ago when Facebook was trying to make Facebook coin and uh, we got information that there were like seven different countries around the world who had signed up already to use it. It was a couple of, I think, one or two Southeast Asian countries. There were about four in Africa, maybe one in Latin America. It was something along those lines. But like, I mean, like from the get go, these countries were already on board. And then we found out that allegedly... These countries had signed um, paperwork with Facebook. This is why they partnered with them to basically allow Facebook money to be used in their country as a legal form of payment. Sounds crazy, I know, but apparently it had to do something with like debt so that Facebook, you would be in debt to Facebook as long as, what was it? You, you're in debt to Facebook as long as you 
let them use their currency or Facebook coin as one of the local currencies, but then they also pay the local government into what they need to build up their infrastructure. That's why you might remember like two years ago when you know the governments were going completely insane and they, they, they stopped everything that they had to do with Libra and Calibra and all these other things that Facebook was doing with making their own currency because if that's the news that we got, if we knew that seven different countries uh, had already signed on to, to basically, in in essence, uh, make Facebook coin one of the currencies of their country. Uh, Facebook then also becomes a like a reserve world bank. It's it's kind of completely weird to think about. But in the same exact instance, I, I wonder how far the reach of Binance is actually going with all of this. I I, I feel like this isn't a uh, uh, fly by night kind of thing where they're helping out of the goodness of their hearts or wallets. I wonder exactly where this ends up going. So anyway, yeah, any day that a, a government does not ban crypto is a very good one. Uh, but the way that this keeps going, I'm, I, I, I think at this point, I, I read an article that was talking about um, Binance and how big it actually is. Not like they, they, were, they didn't go into specifics, but it was something about like the power that they have over the industry. And it was something along the lines of they're basically nearly at this point, kind of too big to fail. They've they've done what other crypto exchanges could not do, uh, and they made it out of the darkness, especially, I mean, it took them a year to get regulated around the world. Remember how, like, we used to hear a long time ago that, like, if Facebook was trying to get any, I mean, not Facebook, if Coinbase was trying to get any type of, like, regulatory paperwork, it took them, like, four or five years. Same exact thing with Gemini. Like, I think the other month, we just had news that after four years of waiting, uh, Gemini finally got paperwork to be able to work in Ireland. And it's like, it didn't take Binance that long to get paperwork anywhere. So maybe they just have better lawyers. Who knows? That's the... Binance is assisting the government of Azerbaijan on how to regulate cryptocurrencies. Very fascinating indeed. Yeah. Let's move on. Also in the news, a new legislation titled Financial Innovation for Investment and Social Economic Development, that's a long sentence, has been passed by authorities in San Luis. I have I assume that's how you say San Luis. Uh, San Luis. Anyway, which can be seen as a significant step towards the region's road to digitization. The bill intends to use blockchain technology for the improvement of San Luis. The terms financial innovation and social, economic, cultural, and financial inclusion are used to describe some of these benefits. A stable coin apparently is going to be created as part of the bill. The possible stable coin that could be issued as an outcome of the bill will have all of its value backed used by liquid assets held by San Luis. When it becomes available, it will be made available to all residents of the state. The existing law just establishes a framework for the development of the stablecoin. Therefore, its precise operation remains unknown. Oh boy, we're getting to the point where um, major governments and central banks are going to be starting to release their central bank digital currencies sometime next year. Worry not, it's still garbage. It's just a digitized version of the fiat currencies that we have right now. But we're also getting a lot of news about like smaller nations and even like uh, smaller provinces and cities who are uh, going to be releasing their own, either their own digital currency, like remember before where there was New York coin, and then Miami also released their own coin, and I was like, nobody buy it because it's going to be garbage, and I don't hear anything more about it. But now they're also trying to release their own stable coins, but these are also going to be completely useless because no one is going to actually use it. Like the point of a stable coin more so is to have a stable wor you know, work of value in a digital form, but also to trade cryptocurrencies with it. If they're making their own stable coin, it needs to, it needs to have interoperability with every other stable coin, with cryptocurrency exchanges, or else it simply won't ever work. Like no one's going to actually, you understand what I'm saying? So if this had been the entirety of Argentina doing this, that would have made a lot more sense. But it's just a small little city that's going to be doing it. So 
I mean, once again, this is not the first time that we've heard that we've heard of something like this. A lot of countries are doing the exact same thing, making their own stable coins, making their own coins, but none of them are interoperable and they're not going to be used. I, I think they're simply being the same exact way that years ago, uh, people were trying to make as many cryptocurrencies as possible. Everyone thinks that they can simply just make a stable coin appear out of thin air and that it would actually be used or be popular, but that's not, that's not how any of this actually works. That's the San Luis in Argentina is going to be trying to make their own stable coin. So good luck with that. Yeah. Moving along. All righty. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely incredible. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, commenting, and or supporting in your own special way. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.